Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Infrastructure Director Smartbox Group, Radak Nowak, and CTO OGD, Yup Piscar. CTO of my company, OGD. I'm um, not Diraj, he'll come on later. Um, and this is. My name is Radek, and I'm one of the first Nutanix customers in Europe. And I'm very happy to welcome all of you in the first .next Nutanix user conference in Europe. Which is? Which is? Which is sold amazing. Out. It is amazing. It is actually sold out. As I'm standing here looking at you know, the people sitting here, there's people standing there. There's no room left. It's sold out. How awesome is that? It's amazing. Pretty amazing. So what are you looking forward to this conference? Well, for sure, one key note for me is Acropolis. I'm really, I want to keep an eye on it because I, it's a game changer. I think it's a game changer. <laughs> and I agree. I'm pretty curious what Nutanix will bring out, maybe even this keynote following the Acropolis hypervisor. I'm not sure. Who do we talk to you about that? Uh, well, I'm not really sure, but I think so we're ready. Yeah. I think so we're ready. Please, warm welcome the founder and CEO of Nutanix, Diraj Pandey. Thank you, Oop and Radek. And thank you, everyone, for being here. What a night, huh? What a night. Well, of course, everybody's on the laptops looking at the election results now. But uh, uh, first of all, thank you, everyone, for really making this a mega event for us. There were more than 1,300 re registrants from 52 countries across 33 verticals. So a round of applause for the team and the people around this. Room here, and the fact that this is our first event, you know, in uh, Europe. But again, that's the culture of the company that we want to actually bring this and make this meaningful to on your terms. You know, this this event, this company, the people that we have around us is all about you. So um, obviously, you know, I, I look back at the events of the last, you know, 10, 12 hours and think about the pundits. Like, what happens to the pundits now? You know, everybody actually predicted something else, and there was a black swan moment that actually happened, which is very fitting for uh, Nassim uh, Nicholas Taylor, one of our um, speakers tomorrow, is going to talk about consequential, improbable events that actually happen. But then I thought, you know, yeah, what about the pundits? You know, they're going to really start thinking about, you know, what, did, what went wrong and what's the pulse of the market and what's really happening around us is really, really hard to predict. But then I was talking to one of our team members. They're like, at least we have legalized marijuana in California. So at the very least, we can talk about <laughs> some positives for the pundits right there. And probably they're going to move to California. The other thing I do want to bring up is uh, this momentous uh, event for the company. And again, I want to thank all our customers, our employees, and all our partners for the last six, seven years of our company's existence for making uh, uh, a milestone actually come true. Now, obviously, this, uh, you know, the story behind NTNX is very early. It's, it's, uh, we're probably a baby that was born. You know, we were kind of in the womb as a private company. And uh, a lot has to go on. I mean, we are in the very early stages of a company that could falter to, uh, you know, flatter to deceive. So I'm really looking forward to everything that can come from our customers, from our partners, from employees to keep the company honest. And, uh, if you look at really successful companies, when they go public, they're this tiny compared to what they could be if they had the ambition and the attention to detail itself. So long way for us to go, and I get a lot of congratulatory notes about the IPO itself. But it's not a destination for us. It's a, it's a mere milestone in the journey. And a lot can still go wrong for the company. So we are really look, thinking about how we can go back and become a small company one more time and think about what it means to understand our larger scope, the responsibility that we have on our shoulders, which is one of the other favorite things that we talk about in the company is 
What about people? You know, now that we've gone public, uh, we have achieved a milestone, but do we just talk business or do we also talk about community and society and what can we do for diversity and women in technology and, uh, you know, things like that, you know, issues that actually are a little bit larger than just the business stuff around us, you know, because, you know, we can get pretty serious about business, but eventually it's about people. So there's a lot of effort around uh, the company to really understand what should heart mean for us. You know, we have a company that uh, has virtues of being humble, honest, and, and hungry, but what about heart itself? So we'd love to actually really uh, talk to all of you and figure out how to amplify this idea of heart. Like, what does it mean to really go and serve the community, the local communities around us? And if you folks have uh, initiatives and programs around this idea of corporate social responsibility, uh, there are people uh, in this company at Nutanix who would love to actually talk to you. Yesterday, by the way, was a great day for us. We got about uh, 300 uh, backpacks ready for one of these uh, children's organizations in Vienna. So a round of applause for all of you who actually participated in this thing. <laughs> Thank you. Now, um, shifting gears a little bit, I talked about pundits. Uh, my next 10 minutes are going to be about pundits. It's going to be about how every time we thought that something was defined, it was redefined. If we go back to the 80s, we thought that the PC was defined, and Apple had won the whole thing. And we realized that it was only the beginning of what a personal computer would be. And the 90s was such a different decade for personal computing, way different than what Apple had actually thought. You know, if you think of uh, uh, Symbian and uh, Microsoft operating system, I was reading an article that mentioned how Microsoft was number two and Symbian was number one in 2006. And the pundits that actually projected that Microsoft is gonna be the number one operating system for the mobile world by 2010, number one. And then these two outsiders come in and redefine and converge our entire lives, you know, you know, personal lives around us in pure software. And then there's nowhere to be seen this Microsoft operating system itself. So I think in that vein, a lot will actually happen in our world itself. And the idea of cloud is uh, not just about renting things. It's about a lot of deeper issues that people want to really achieve, not the least of which is, you know, how do I really do fractional consumption? If I want to start small and pay as I grow, it happened in the world of business software 10 years ago with SaaS, and a lot is now being questioned around infrastructure as well. Do I continue to buy big gear, or can I start small? Can I grow and shrink at will? The other thing which is equally important about the cloud is this idea of continuous innovation and continuous consumption. Because you know, if you think about your Gmail, your Facebook, your Google Maps, they never go down and they're constantly being upgraded, and you are consuming it on an everyday basis, a piece of software, services, and hardware that are being upgraded all the time without us knowing about it. Unlike what we see in the enterprise, which is a highly waterfall-biased methodology compared to what the cloud is, which is so agile, and every 15 days we're changing the world. And we've done a lot of things uh, within Nutanix to figure out what is continuous innovation and what is continuous consumption itself. Obviously, the idea of simplicity, the one-click simplicity, how do you meld metaphors of e-commerce and consumer-grade design with infrastructure itself? Is it the core of the word cloud itself? And lastly, how do you really shrink the gap between procurement and provisioning? So these are the virtues that are actually under the covers of what cloud really means, uh, as opposed to just the fact that you can rent infrastructure the way you can actually uh, rent cars and, and hotels and so on. And uh, this is probably the core of what we're all going through in our lives. You know, there's going to be a left brain of our world and there's a right brain of our world. The right brain wants liberty and frictionless everything. And the left brain is about budgets and compliance and uh, data safe harbor and a lot of things that actually come to the fore when you think about the world cloud itself. And just like most things in life, uh, at the end of it all, it's going to be a balance between the left brain and the right brain that will really define the cloud for the next 10, 15, 20 years. One of the other pieces, again, the you know, pundit said, convergence is done. The big guys are here. You know, there's VMware and Cisco and EMC, and they've come and really put this beautiful thing together that's called converged infrastructure. That was four or five years ago. And then out of nowhere, this 
paradigm of hyperconvergence comes and says, you haven't seen convergence done right yet. And today, nobody talks about converged infrastructure. While everybody in the media said the big guys are here and they've really defined what infrastructure looks like for the next 10, year, 10 years itself. And then uh, this highly improbable consequential architecture actually comes in that basically makes for the next 10 years of IT itself, hopefully, about hyperconvergence. And something similar is happening with this notion of hybrid, rent and own coming together. There's some big splash you know, announcements happening of how the big folks are coming together to redefine the cloud itself. And we think it's a great opportunity for innovation. You know, what we saw with converged infrastructure is happening one more time. Yet another large businesses, big technology companies coming in, defining partnerships, when true convergence of owning and renting is a computer science problem. It's not a BD problem, it's not an alliances issue, it's something to do with what do you really do in pure software, and what are the mechanisms for networking and security and data migration and application migration identity management, all these things are up for grabs for the true nature of what hybrid will actually mean. The question is what does Nutanix do in these coming years to redefine convergence of the public and private coming together itself. So obviously it's a journey for us and you'll see our team come together and talk about you know, at least uh, the next 12 months of the company, but there's a lot more here. Again, uh, I, I don't think the pundits know what cloud really means in the next five years, 10 years itself. I mean, you talked about this notion of virtualization and how virtualization came and solved all the problems. And then you realize, oh, we've only virtualized compute, the server, which is probably the cheapest part of a data center spend itself. There's so much more to virtualize with storage and networking and you know, a ton of other things that are much harder to actually put in pure software, which is what we're seeing this coming decade as well. So if you take that to the next level, the idea of renting infrastructure is still scratching the surface of what cloud really means and how we need to really go back to this ownership of uh, infrastructure as well as renting of infrastructure coming together in one. Cloud will be also be dispersed. I think uh, if you look at uh, conventional wisdom, power is commodity, it's utility. Water is utility and a commodity. And yet, you don't just have tens or even 100 power companies in the world or water companies in the world. There are thousands of these power plants and so on. So if computing were to become utility, what's in here to say that there will only be 10 or 100 data centers in the world? At the end of it all, we need to take millions of apps, not just 10, 50, 100 apps. We're talking about millions of apps and serve billions of people. That's how complex this idea of infrastructure as a service is actually going to be, compared to what we've seen in SaaS itself. And to then to make it relevant for 150 plus countries and make sure that you, know, you understand the idea of data safe harbor and compliance and things like that, there's a lot more nuances that will actually happen when computing even becomes utility, which it's far from becoming utility that uh, you see with power and water itself, because it's not just there's a two SLAs, it's not just volts and amperes and you're done. There's a lot more that happens with computing and with software in particular in general. When you think about what should software deliver today, it's way different than what software delivered 10 years ago and 20 years ago. I and mean, we laugh at what software could actually do 20 years ago with what it actually does for us today. So again, this idea of cloud is a lot more dispersed and will be a lot more dispersed than we actually think, simply because it's going to mimic life. It's going to be like power and utility and a whole lot more than that. In fact, in the same vein, uh, you know, the idea that the cloud is actually a lot more dispersed than we think, one of our solution architects built uh, a Nutanix stack on a palm-sized server, and it actually goes in backpacks, and he and his, uh, his father have actually come together to define what it could look like in some sense. You, know, you put Nutanix Community Edition, which is an entire cloud stack running on a palm-sized server, and then he put it all together in uh, this experience that you know, he actually shows through this uh, vignette of photographs, of thinking about how eventually the cloud will actually be in a backpack as well. Because you know, IoT and computing, they're not two different things. It's not like you know, IoT is all just sensors and they collect data, and everything must be 
you know, sent back to a core data center where things will actually get computed and analyzed. A lot of the computing will be local to these sensors and IOTs as well, which I think is going to be a massive convergence phenomenon that, again, the world has yet to appreciate itself. And again, going back to this idea of how cloud will actually be literally in the clouds as well. So at the end of my talk, you'll see a video from uh, Richard Arsenian, you know, the person who's actually responsible for building this. And for those of you who actually uh, haven't used Community Edition, I think it's a great way to really kick the tires on Nutanix and get it for free and run it on you know, your server of uh, uh, your favorite server, or even one of these Intel Nooks, uh, which is less than $1,000 of investment itself. So again, the idea of uh, you know, cloud coming together, the cloud being more dispersed, the fact that it's going to be a left and right brain cloud itself, you'll see a lot of these things emerge while we think that the idea of cloud is actually done done. It's the very early days of uh, cloud computing itself. So uh, what do you think the pundits say about HCI? Uh, the big guys are here. What's in it for Nutanix? It's a smallish company. You know, all these big guys actually think they'd actually do hyperconverged as well. Well, hyperconverged is not a destination unto itself. It was the first wave of innovation. It was when you brought compute and storage together. But think about everything on the green uh, arrow and the blue one right there. The, those are the two which is uh, going to define what enterprise cloud even means. There's going to be a new operating system. And their operating system is going to be a whole lot more than just bringing compute and storage together. You know, things like native virtualization and multi-hypervisor support and uh, file and block storage. I mean, these things have to become pure software. They can't just be separate boxes unto themselves, you know? Uh, idea of micro-segmentation and containers and app mobility and uh, object storage. All these things that you've come to expect from Amazon and other public cloud providers have to be a part of the definition of the enterprise cloud operating system itself. And that, to us, is what it means to redefine the word cloud. Because it's not just about things that you can rent, but also about things that you can own. But both of these have a very similar experience. We're able to spin things up without really having to have people go and rack and stack more hardware versus these are services, and you can spin them up in pure software. Infrastructure is code, and it's eminently programmable. That's the vision that Nutanix is actually pursuing. And we're in the very early days of this. Uh, I think that what people think is hyperconvergence the word itself will fade away. If you think about the word smart and smartphone, I mean, nobody uses the word smart anymore, right? I mean, the word smart is now inane. Everything is now a smartphone. That's exactly what's going to happen to infrastructure itself. Everything will become pure software. And then you have to really think about not just blending compute and storage, but thinking about an operating system that has all the capabilities that you've come to expect from infrastructure as a service itself. So again, we are just getting started. There's a ton of work that uh, we have to do in the coming 10 years. I mean, obviously, as a company, when you look at uh, getting to a certain stage, and it's like, you know, let's say, half a billion dollars plus in revenue, probably a billion and a half dollars in sales, which is what this company has done in the last four or five years, there's another 10 years, at least, of innovation and disruption and going and questioning and redefining what the status quo is. And we think that we are in the first year of that new decade for Nutanix itself. So a ton of work ahead for us and my peers, my team, uh, Sunil and Benny and Rajiv and everybody else, Raja, will come and talk about all of this. So without further ado, I just want to play the video, if you could, of this Acropolis one, which will highlight uh, the value of community edition, the fact that cloud is actually literally in the clouds as well, and the fact that you, know, you could get your engineers to go and start to tinker with technology to build something that could be a great value, like we are talking to you know, defense departments and oil and gas companies about how we could take our stack and put it in really small footprints, maybe soldiers' backpacks and you know, um, oil rigs and things like that using this uh, idea of a palm-sized server running an entire cloud stack itself. Thank you. <laughs> 